Hi everyone, and welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. What we're looking here is probably the heart of a turntable. A lot of people don't think, don't give enough care, a thought on their cartridge. Well, I must say that probably this is the most important part of your turntable. And I think it's very important to know how to choose the proper cartridge and how to match it with your turntable. Meaning how to match it with your ampli preamplifier and with your tone arm mainly. So let's dive in. Let's take a look. Okay, so uh, we're going to examine three main aspects uh, regarding cartridges, turntable cartridges. First, we're going to take a brief look at the typologies that are out there. Then we're going to try to discuss how to match the chosen typology with a preamplifier if you're going to choose a standalone preamplifier, which means separated by your turntable. And I highly recommend that. Take a look at this video. Third of all, we're going to take a look at the matching of the cartridge with your torn arm. Um, these three aspects may seem a little too technical, uh, difficult to understand, or maybe too complicated overall and you don't care about it, but actually uh, the more you get into vinyl reproduction, and I would say analog reproduction in general, these aspects are fundamental to achieve a high quality, high fidelity audio reproduction. And if you care about the quality of the music you're listening to, you'll see that if you um, be careful to these uh, elements along the road, you will find out, you will um, result with a fantastic audio system in the end without spending an arm and a leg. So I highly recommend to follow these indications. Let's start. Point number one. Uh, this is very simple. Um, the typologies of cartridges out there are mainly divided in moving magnets and moving coils. As I said, we're not going to go too much in depth in all these aspects. We don't care. We just want to know in which direction to go and what to look, look out for. So, um, these two typologies uh, are very similar, actually. The, the basic principle is reversed in one typology and reversed in the other. Just to roughly discuss about uh, a coil and magnet and how these move inside a cartridge, which in, mo in most cases, high quality cartridges are handmade one by one. It's a, an art to realize a high quality cartridge. So don't, uh, um, don't be uh, astonished or, or completely thrown out if you find high prices cartridges and think it's audiophile craziness because they do cost a lot and obviously uh, the, the different manufacturers produce a very low quantities of these, which is why these uh, pieces of art are so expensive. Obviously a lot of uh, houses, brands do put a higher price because they're high-end products. And we don't want that. We're, we're gonna leave that aside. There are a lot of excellent brands. I will uh, write a few of them down here below and so you can go and, and look around, which do uh, sell excellent product, ec products at the right price. But let's go back to our uh, discourse. So we were talking about moving magnets and moving coils cartridges. Usually the top quality, the best audio signal comes from moving coil cartridges. Although, although uh, to have a good quality moving coil cartridge, you do have to go in the upper section. You do have to spend a lot of money. Hence, it's better to spend a fair amount of money on a moving magnet uh, cartridge instead of a fair amount of money on a moving coil cartridge. So if you have the bucks, go for 
a high quality moving coil MC cartridge. If you don't, get a high quality moving magnet cartridge, which will cost, cost you less. Now, this leads us to our second point, which is the preamplifier. Obviously, before you buy your cartridge, or in reverse, before you buy your preamp, make sure that you're going to have the correct typology. I mean, if you have a moving magnet a type of cartridge, you have to have a preamp that is capable of dealing with that typology of cartridges. Uh, most preamps today uh, are able to, to deal with both of them, which mainly the main difference is the, the gain, which is the, um, the, capa the, the, the possibility, the capacity of electric current that the preamplifier is able to give to the signal. The, the times that it's uh, capable of amplifying that very, very weak signal that the cartridges deliver to the, um, the preamp. So that's a big difference actually between that, uh, between the two typologies. Obviously, to amplify a very, very subtle signal as that of moving coils, cartridges, that's the difference between moving magnets and moving coils, among the construction and geometry is the signal. The, um, the, the, the signal of the moving coil cartridges is very, very, very weak, while the signal of moving magnets coils uh, cartridges uh, is surely more potent, more stronger, more strong. Which this means that um, in order to amplify a very weak signal, you have to have a good preamplifier because it's much more difficult and uh, it, it has to work on something very very subtle very very weak and in order to deliver a, a good fidelity of that sound you have to have a good quality piece of equipment while instead if you're working with a moving magnet type of cartridge the signal is already a little more boosted a little more strong so in that case is a, a decent preamp is more than enough it'll do its work uh, even if you don't spend, uh, as I always say, an arm and a leg. So uh, what do we have to look apart from the typology in when we buy a preamp in connection in matching with its cartridge? Well, uh, a good, uh, there, are, there are mainly two other elements you have to look for. You have to look for the capacitance, which in most cases, unfortunately, it is not indicated on or the cartridge manufacturer specs or the specs of the preamp. If you do find them on both, or if you write the companies, please tell me the capacitance of uh, this product or the other product. Uh, the, the rule, the general rule, I'm not gonna go into the, the technical details, as I said, the general rule is to have a match between the two values that you find. So look out for that, and the most important part is to look for the load, the impedance load. You have to check that um, the value reported for your cartridge, which for example can be uh, 47, 50, 100, 1000 ohms, resistance impedance is measured in ohms, uh, this value must fall in, in the range within the range of the preamp which is it's very easy. You just have to confront the two uh, tables of, of specifications and you'll see that your cartridge is, is maybe matched with that specific amplifier, preamplifier that you're looking for. So these aspects are fundamental. Turning to the tone arm, things get a little more difficult. I'll try to keep it simple because it's not simple. Sometimes I get mixed as well. Let's, let's just say that to have a perfect match of your cartridge with your tone arm, you have to look at, uh, mainly, you have to look at one aspect, one measurement, which is called uh, compliance. Um, before getting in compliance, I just want to say why we have to do this. Well, um, unfortunately, Considering the mass of your torn arm, head shell, cartridge, and the compliance, which is the 
uh, elasticity, the capability of the cantilever system of your cartridge to be elastic. Unfortunately, um, when, for example, a record is warped or there are some, um, uh, it, the, the, the reading of the grooves is not homogeneous, the, the cantilever, the cartridge, might start to vibrate and uh, create a reson resonance, um, might, might create a frequency. If this frequency is very low, you're going to have some problems. Uh, all the way arriving to, for example, jumping out of the, of the, of the groove in the worst cases. Of. So we have to find the perfect, the, the good, the best frequency in which this happens, because it's going to happen. But we have to be in the ball range, we could say, between the 7 hertz and 12 hertz, more or less. It depends, obviously. Well, the best, uh, usually the best uh, frequency that we're looking for is around 10 hertz. In order to understand if the tone arm and your cartridge plus head shell is, is going to vibrate, is going to uh, have that frequency uh, going through the whole arm and, and cartridge, there is a, um, a formula, a mathematic formula, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Don't worry, we're, you're not going to do anything. There are links where there are um, uh, applications that will do it for you. I will tell you where to go, how to do it, it's easy. But I, I need to tell you about these things, otherwise you're not going to understand what we're talking about. So, um, the compliance of a cartridge is a fundamental aspect in order to determine this frequency that's going to go through the arm. Because if the frequency is too high or too low, we're going to have, as I said, issues. Sonic issues and mechanical issues. So, uh, we, might, we must find the, the correct um, uh, frequency. How do you do this? You have to know the mass of your arm, which means the, the, the grams, the weight of your arm, obviously the, the, the cartridge, and if you have it, obviously also the head shell, including the screws, everything. I mean, you have to know everything. And you can find these, again, these aspects in the specs sheet of every, every uh, component of your system. If you don't, write to the manufacturer and ask them. They know it, obviously. So once we have that information, we have to understand the compliance. Compliance is usually measured in, in various way, ways, unfortunately. You're gonna find different typologies expressed in different ways in the specs sheet. So, so the main typologies in which the compliance is expressed are mainly three, I would say. The um, millinewton micrometer typology, the um, centimeter per dyne typology, or simply the CU or compliance unit. And more or less, more or less, these are similar. So if you find that value, you can uh, easily obtain the um, insert the value in the formula um, and obtain the frequency. What is the problem? That compliance may be expressed in dynamic typology or static typology, static compliance or dynamic compliance. When we have a dynamic compliance, it's usually measured in a 10 hertz or 100 hertz of frequency, sometimes a thousand hertz, but it's very rare. What does this mean? That you, you must find practically the correct um, typology of value because otherwise we're not going to be able to insert this little value in our application to obtain the frequency. Um, usually the general rule is that when we have a, a static value of compliance, it will be four times what is a, a dynamic value with a hundred hertz of frequency, or it will be double if we're talking about uh, 10 hertz of frequency. For example, if we have 40 CU or a centimeter per dyne um, compliance, it will mean that we have, for example, with 100 hertz, 10 units. Or instead, if, we, if we're going under 10, uh, 10 hertz, we're going to have um, 
20 uh, units. And so that's the general rule. But again, um, you just have to find that value, convert it in the value required by the application. You can, I'm gonna put the link here to determine these values. Once you insert in the mass, the compliance, you will see if the frequency falls in that range I told you in the beginning, 7, 12. Remember that the best is 10. If you're around that value, 10, 11, then you're okay. You can buy that cartridge finally, or that tone arm. So these are the general rules, um, without getting too technical, I hope, to correctly buy and match a cartridge with your tone arm, also your preamp, and in general with your turntable system. Okay, so um, before closing the video, I think it's useful to take a look at a few cartridges and phono preamps in order to understand better the specs, the, the layout of these, how they appear, and what to look for. So let's start, for example, from this Audio Technica, this excellent cartridge. This is a moving coil cartridge. And as you can see here, um, there is a very important value that we did not discuss in the video that you must always look for, the output voltage. Um, as you can see, it's very low, it's 0 0.3 millivolts, and it's typical to have this low value in moving coil cartridges. In moving magnets, it's gonna be much more higher. And you have to check that your um, preamp is capable of dealing with that kind of low voltage. Um, usually if it's a, pro a good phono preamp, a decent phono preamp, it'll handle it. But always remember to check this in the, in the phono preamp. Afterwards, we'll take a look at that. Also here, we can see that we have also indicated the compliance, which is um, also expressed in static compliance and dynamic compliance. As you can see, 40 the static and 10 the dynamic. Uh, as we said, in fact, we can see that ratio of four times the uh, static compliance in respect to the dynamic typology. Also here, another spec we have to always look for is the recommended load impedance, which is which is uh, more than is recommended is more than 100 ohms. Uh, let's take a look to another excellent cartridge, which I highly recommend, uh, the Dina Vector DD10 XI5. This is again a moving coil cartridges cartridge. This is the basic typology, but it's an excellent excellent very good cartridge which i highly recommend here you can see it's the, the specs are very um simple reduced not too in detail but we can see the the output voltage which is kind of high actually for a moving coil so again look for this and obviously you have to have a moving coil typology a preamp in order to deal with that some, 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 someone can also use a moving magnet typology. And you can do that. If it, if it accept, accepts this kind of output, you can do it actually. Um, uh, again, here you can see the compliance. This is a static compliance expressed in centimeters uh, di di uh, per dyne. And here is the number you can insert in that application, which will help us to determine the frequency, as we said. Uh, which which must remain within the 10 uh, Hertz um, Again here we find the recommended load impedance which in this case must be kind of high um, more than 1000 ohms um, If we move on and take a look for example on a very good moving magnet uh, type of cartridge an orthophone bronze 2m here again, we can take a look and see that the output, see, is much more high. It's five millivolts in this case. So we have to see if our phono preamp for moving magnets is capable of dealing with this output. Um, also, we can see the compliance here, especially in dynamic. Also, it specifies that it's lateral. Compliance can be lateral and vertical, but don't worry about that. Let's just, let's just focus on the dynamic compliance, which in this case is 22. Um, micronewton, which is which is will be the uh, the value that we're going to insert in our application. Um, also here, since we're dealing with a moving magnet magnet typology, we have the capacitance indicated. Um, the load resistance in this case almost always is is a standard 47 ohms. We have to check 
mainly this value, the capacitance, which is expressed, it must be between 150 and 300 picofarad. So this is again another value that you must check that, uh, that the, the phono preamp you have in mind is capable of dealing with this, um, this value. So let's take a look at a, at a phono preamp. As I already uh, suggested in a video, here's a link. Um, this is an excellent phono preamp. You can find it on the used market. There are a lot of them now uh, at a decent price and you'll have an excellent, excellent sound, guaranteed. So let's take a look at the specs, what they, what they say here. So for example, here in fact it says a maximum input level at one kilohertz for moving mag magnets the maximum is 45 millivolts which is a lot so don't worry about that while instead for moving cart uh, moving coils is 4.5 so enough to deal with everything more or less also um we must check for example the the impedance which this must be matched with um the uh, recommended load impedance which, as you can see, is 47,000 ohms or 1,000 or 100. But as you can see, there's also the possibility to customize your load. So uh, virtually it'll set anything. No, no, no problems with that. It also says here the capacitance is 100 picofarad. Um, so um, let's take a look to another excellent um, uh, pre uh, preamp phono which I highly recommend, which is the um, EFI iPhone 2. The specs in detail are here in the PDF, which is very detailed actually. Here it tells you what kind of output it will accept for the two typologies of cartridges, as you can see less than 1.2 millivolts for M MC or more than 1.2 millivolt for MM. Um, again, here it explains in detail the, uh, well, the gain but that's important just to, to select the, the correct um, little knobs on the, on the pre phono. But we're more interested in the correct load, which is here uh, clearly explained. And as I wrote in the, in the video, be careful not to, um, to, com to, to, to confund, to mix up the internal impedance resistance. We don't want that. We want to know the uh, impedance, the output of the impedance, which is expressed, you, you find it in the specs sheet, as we saw, as the recommended load impedance. So uh, if we take a look here, we can find some suggestions in that, in that, um, in that case. So um, here we have especially this um, little application, which is fantastic. You just have to put the total mass, which means the weight of the tonar plus the cartridge plus the head shell plus the everything that regards that obviously you don't have to look at the internal parts of something if you find the weight of a tonar which sometimes usually a, a typical value is 12 grams you'll have to add the cartridge plus the head shell at that point once you insert it here for example 24 grams then you'll have to insert the compliance as we said the cu is just as, as the same as the other typologies. So for example, we saw here that it's 12. Then we just have to put here 12, compute. And this is the frequency we're gonna obtain, which is pretty good, 9.3 Hertz, which we said the perfect uh, resonance frequency is 10. So uh, this would be an excellent combination with the, between the tone arm and the cartridge. And that's it. Well, guys, I hope you like this. Enjoy this video. Um, please post your questions and comments and suggestions here below. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Remember, it's free. Remember that it'll tell you when you I post a new video, and usually I do that once a week. But you have to click that notification bell in order to have a, a notification. And uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. See you soon, guys. Bye.